This video is brought to you by Skillshare. The first 1,000 people to use the link in the description will get a free trial of Skillshare Premium membership. We all know that home workspaces are more important than ever in 2020 for one rather obvious reason. And I've had some kind of home studio space for the past five years now, even when I had nine to five jobs. I just knew I needed somewhere to be able to make music and enough content to build this YouTube channel. And well, video sets and backdrops have improved significantly on this platform and I'm constantly trying to up my game. So I'll always be mixing up and improving my space, but I thought I'd document it in this current state, and I blame Casey Neistat for my fascination with studio spaces, but it can take a while to craft something that makes you feel creative and, you know, keeps you inspired, especially when you're spending so much time in it nowadays. So I'm just going to show you my little nook that has definitely evolved since I moved here two years ago. And if you don't know by now, I'm Mary Spender, a singer-songwriter from the UK, and I just want to show you my rather DIY space that helps me focus and create music and videos in just the spare bedroom of this apartment and see if it gives you any ideas. I've been working towards something like this for what feels like an eternity, and I've acquired some really awesome gear over the years that helps me do my job. And obviously it just never gets messy and it always looks like this. First, you have to decide exactly what your objectives are. I need a very multi-purpose space as I have to do so many different things or want to do so many different things. The priority is somewhere to record music and film videos and live stream as well as study, do general admin work, take meetings and practice music. And I actually even chill out in here too, but I also feel fortunate that I can close off this room and as I'm in a two bed apartment, have separate living and sleeping spaces elsewhere. Because I am renting though, I can't install acoustic treatment. So I've done the best I can, but I can't really make any permanent adjustments. So this might resonate and inspire those who are in a similar position. Believe me, as soon as I can, I want one of those pubs built studios in the middle of nowhere that I can spec out to my heart's content. But actually, we all know that you can literally start a YouTube channel just using your phone being anywhere. So I can't use that as an excuse to create. Up until recently, I was using a kitchen table as my desk. However, it wasn't quite right. And I was also not wanting to spend tons of money when I know I could recycle. So that's exactly what I did. I found this desk locally for 30 pounds, about $40 off Gumtree. And it's unbelievably lucky that it fits perfectly and makes full use of this corner space. However, I've had to improvise to be able to fit my iMac and monitor stands as well as leave enough space for different kinds of working. So I've brought the desk forward quite a bit and placed a little cupboard at the back for discrete hard drive storage. And then also to act as an extra platform with help from a metal stand on top of that for the iMac to sit further back and hide a few of those cables. It's about an arm's length away from me so I'm not straining my eyes but then far enough away that it fits between my monitors that are raised up supported by stands from Nordell which I just bought off Amazon. The general rule is to have the tweeters at ear level so I've done the best I can. If and when I upgrade, I'll be looking for a standing desk, I know they're very popular, that is able to move the monitors as well to the right level. The first thing I always notice about other people's space is where the speakers are pointing, which is usually far below ear level. Although I'm not doing final mixes in here, so I don't need to get super mathematical with positioning, I do like to hear everything as crystal clear as possible in this limited space from the Adam A7Xs. I even used to use books when I had slightly smaller monitors and before I got proper stands. It just saves you blasting the volume too loudly. And you know, do what you can with what you have before spending money, whether the internet approves of it or not. 
So I'm now using the 2020 27 inch Retina 5K iMac from Apple with the nano texture glass, which helps in a room that has quite a few different sources of lighting and helps me film the screen too, as it reduces the glare. This is actually on an extended loan from Apple after I was a featured creator during the launch of this model. So I know I'm lucky, but it has the 3.6 gigahertz 10 core Intel Core i9 processor and 128 gigabytes of memory. Then there is two terabytes of storage, but I'm continuously backing up onto larger external hard drives and then keeping my workflow flexible by using small portable one terabyte SSD drives so I can edit off my MacBook Pro if need be when we're allowed out again. I then use an ethernet cable to try and keep my connection as stable as possible, but I still don't have super speedy internet. I just make do with longer upload times for now, uh, but we'll look to upgrade in future. Then I use the Apple Magic Wireless Keyboard and Magic Trackpad 2. I've never been a fan of a standard mouse after using a MacBook since 2009, and I've always just loved the functionality of the trackpad, whether you're a PC or Mac user, a Bluetooth keyboard is a must though. It's super useful when you're self-recording. So my audio software, well, I'm now using Ableton Live and Logic Pro 10. That leads me on to my Apollo X4 from Universal Audio, which uses Thunderbolt and is the most beautiful interface I've ever owned and is all I need with four Unison preamps and two headphone outs. Then I have two microphones that I also capture onto SD cards using the Zoom H6 Handy recorder. For my videos, I use the Rode NTG4 overhead and then for podcasts and vocal recording, I use the SM7B. I have the cloud lifter to hand for using the SM7 through the Zoom, but if I'm recording vocals, then I don't need that extra gain as the Apollo X4 is already powerful enough. I'm a terrible procrastinator, so I try and keep interruptions to a minimum. I'm pretty honest with myself about how much work I'm getting done and track my working hours in a notebook that I keep on my desk. I used to handwrite notes and have them all around and to-do lists, but now like every other creator I know, I just use Notion and then to-do for my general task list. I have three newer LED lights angled around the room, then a few fairy lights for my backdrop. I keep a Canon R filming a desk point of view. This has proved useful for my new series called Guitar Stories, and right now I have the RF 15 to 35 millimeter wide angle lens on it, but it's super handy to not have to keep setting it up each time. Although sometimes I do find it intimidating having a camera pointing at me, but that's what lens caps are for. I used to have one of those kneeling ergonomic chairs, but I recently changed to the Habda office chair, which I found on Amazon. I like that it doesn't take up too much room, looks nice and clean with the white finish, and then it was way more affordable than other desk chairs and easy to build. It tilts so I can recline a little bit at my desk and the arms flip up and down so I can play the guitar easily without knocking the instrument. Then for a few extra desk accessories, I obviously have a desk plant that was a gift and it's actually real and I'm guessing it's some form of cactus as it doesn't really require much water and then thankfully it's not too prickly. I try and use a coaster for my morning coffee. This was um, from Adult Swim last Christmas when I just started working on the 12 ounce mouse Cartoon Network TV series. Then I just got this litre water bottle that just simply helps me drink more. And then finally, last but not least, I keep an acoustic guitar or three to hand so I can get practicing or write a song quickly. So that is my Productivity Desk Studio Tour 2020. I do get a lot of questions about the gear I use, so I hope this helps. Okay, so recently I have begun live streaming my study sessions. Now, what am I studying, you ask? Because yes, I'm not currently in school, haven't been for quite some time. Well, I've been inspired to keep on educating myself during this time at home in music and production. And then I'm also learning Spanish all through online courses. I've also been consuming creative and productivity classes on Skillshare, who I can thoroughly recommend and who made this video possible. Skillshare is an online learning community for creatives and curious people that features thousands of classes in music, productivity, illustration, marketing, and entrepreneurship. Most
Most of the classes are under 60 minutes in length and are designed to fit any schedule. It's curated specifically for learning, meaning there are no ads, and they're always launching new premium classes so you can stay focused and follow wherever your creativity takes you. And it's less than $10 a month with an annual subscription. I recently took a class from Ali Abdal as I'm so new to video editing with Final Cut Pro 10 that I'm still finding my way around it. And I love his videos, so wanted to learn exactly how he makes them so aesthetically pleasing. I most definitely got a few tips in color grading and how he makes his videos look nice and cinematic, as well as a few tips in file organization and management. So that's exactly what I'm going to get back to now, but don't forget that the first 1000 people to click the link in the description will get a free trial of Skillshare premium membership. Remember to give me some feedback in the comments so I can continue improving my workspace. Please like and subscribe, but otherwise I'll see you very soon.